I spent £62 on a foundation, so this better be the best foundation that I've ever tried in my life. Hi everyone, welcome back. So today I'm going to be doing a full in-depth first impressions testing wear test of the new Makeup by Mario foundation. We have been blessed with some decent natural lighting today, so I'm going to show you the application and everything in natural lighting and in artificial lighting to see what the differences are. It's called the Surreal Skin Foundation and I have seen so much hype about this online. I think because Mario is such a well-known makeup artist, he obviously does makeup for Kim Kardashian and his makeup looks that he does on other people always look great. I will give it to him. Let's get into it. So the slightly frustrating thing is, is that we now have Sephora in the UK online. I think there are some stores actually coming soon, hopefully. Makeup by Mario is stocked on Sephora, but we don't have the foundation yet. And so I ordered it off of the Makeup by Mario website. It is 45 British pounds, which is a hell of a lot for a foundation. That is more than NARS foundations. That is more than Charlotte Tilbury foundations. That is an expensive foundation. I paid 17 pounds for the shipping, which I know is ridiculous. But you know what? This is my job to test products for you so that you don't have to, or even if you do on a test product, hopefully my opinion can help you out. I'm currently trying to match this to my neck and I did actually try this foundation yesterday just so that I could have like a full day of wearing it and then another day today where I actually film it and so I can gather my thoughts. There are 30 different shades but there does seem to be a pretty good range. The shade matching was the thing that confused me the most because I watched so many reviews on TikTok to try and figure out my shade. Loads of people had said online that the cool shades, so like 1C, 4C, people were saying that the cool shades were not that cool and they were more yellow. I went for the shade 4C because I'd seen a girl test this and it looked pretty yellow on her and I thought, you know what, that looks like a good shade for me. And, and the swatches online, it also looked pretty yellow and not a lot of the cool shades look that cool to be honest. The shade finder also matched me to 4C so I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna go for it. And you can try all of the shades on but I'm not gonna lie, like it's not really, they all, whichever one I click on, they seem to just adjust it to my face. And my main concern with this is that people had showed online that it has glitter in it. Like when you look up close at the bottom, it's got little glitters in it. I don't think you can see it as much in natural lighting. I don't know how well that's gonna come across. So I've moisturized my skin. I'm just gonna go on top of my moisturizer today. Let's put some on while we talk about it. So I'm gonna take one pump, which one pump is quite a good amount of product, you know? It's not like a NARS pump, it's like a full pump. It has a bit of an odd smell to it, I'm not gonna lie. It smells kind of like chemically. By the way, I did give this a good old shake before putting it on. And as you can see from putting it on, it's not super liquidy. I was kind of expecting it to be a little bit thinner in consistency, kind of maybe similar to the NARS light reflecting, but I would say it's a medium thickness. I'm gonna do this side with a brush and the other side with my sponge just to show you the differences. But already you can see it has pretty good coverage. It has covered sco covered that scar that I had just there. For me personally, I would not need more than one pump. Like that is more than enough product. And it claims to be a complexion masterpiece. He said, I put my heart into this groundbreaking formula with the hope of not creating a barrier of foundation, but rather awakening the true infinite beauty that lies within. But I do have to say, it definitely feels thicker than I thought it would. Like it doesn't quite feel as weightless as I was expecting because he said that, you know, he wants it to be skin-like and just enhancing the skin. It feels a little bit heavier than I thought it would. But as you can see from just that side, it goes on really nicely with the brush. So I'm gonna take a sponge on the other side. And with a sponge, I found that, cause I did this yesterday, like I put on a bit with a sponge, bit with my brush. With the sponge, you get less coverage for sure cause it absorbs a little bit more of the product and you get a more natural looking finish. So you can see like I have a couple spot scars down here that haven't been fully covered. So I don't know how well you can see. Oh my gosh, a good little demonstration is I did have some fake freckles on here, which um, I've been using the U-Tan freckle pen to do some like semi-permanent tan freckles. But on this side, you can still see them poking through through on this side and not as much because the brush has given a slightly heavier coverage. Both sides definitely do look very pretty in my opinion, but I do think that I slightly prefer it with the brush. Just to make it equal on this side, I'm gonna take, this was about half a pump and I'm just gonna put a tiny bit But just doing the shade fashion. Oh yeah, it is buildable. I've got to say straight away, the foundation that it reminds me the most of is the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Foundation. So if anybody's tried that one, they both have this very glowy, radiant finish, which if you have very oily skin, I don't think you're gonna like this. I'm gonna say that straight away just because it is so glowy. Just to make it a little bit more natural, I'm gonna go over everything with my sponge. But I have to say, when I first put it on, I was like, oh yeah, this shade looks fine. But then actually when I blend it out and compare it to my neck, I do look a bit more pink in my face than I do on my neck. I was really worried that as soon as I put this on, you were gonna see the glitters in it. But in natural light, I'm not gonna lie, you can't really see the glitter at all. Actually, I can't see any in the natural light. And I think that's probably picking up on camera. And I've got to say, in a few areas of dryness that I had sort of down here from where I had blemishes and I did have a little 
patch of dryness here. It's disguised those areas of dryness pretty well, actually. So at this point, I think it's looking pretty good. I've got to say, even with my phone torch on my face, you can't really see glitter. Like, it doesn't look like I've put highlighter all over my face. It just looks very glowy. Maybe that will change once I've set it so that it's not as reflective. I'm just using a tiny bit of the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Concealer. So I'm just going to put on a little bit of concealer under my eyes. I'm not actually going to put any on my nose because I feel like I don't really need it, to be honest. I have the concealer in the shade 4.5 Fair, by the way. I'm actually going to take my Makeup by Mario Contour Stick in the shade Light Medium just because why not? I am testing his foundation. I've got to say, his contour product blends out beautifully over the top of this. I'm just using some of the Made by Mitchell blush in Pink Lynx. Then I'm going to set everything in place with the Colourpop Loose Powder in... Wait, what? <laughs> the Colourpop No Filter Setting. It says No Filter Setting, Loose Setting, Translucent. You know what I mean. <laughs> and just in case anybody is new here, my skin type is oily but with dry patches. So I do tend to go for more glowy foundations these days. And then I just control it usually with like a lot of powder and setting spray and primers and stuff. However, today I'm not going to do all of the above. I'm not going to use my usual setting sprays because I want to see how the foundation holds up without it. The difference that a bit of powder can make. And I know that some people will say, oh, but it's a glowy foundation. Don't put powder all over the top of it. But honestly, if I don't powder my foundations and set them into place, they would not be there a few hours later. Like they just transfer on everything. I don't know how people do that. And, and yeah, then when they mix with my natural oils, it's just not great. So you can probably see like, the foundation is definitely slightly pink. So if you've seen other people's reviews and they're saying, oh, the cool shades are really warm, don't trust it. Like, yes, it's not the coolest toned foundation that I've ever seen, but it is definitely slightly more on the pink side. Okay, let me just finish off the rest of my makeup and I will come back in two seconds looking like an entirely different person. Okay, so I finished off the rest of my makeup. By the way, if you're wondering, my lip combo is the Rare Beauty Lip Liner in the shade Talented and the Vive Lip Dew in Rosa. Beautiful combination. Mascara started off as sky high, but then I was like, I've not got enough left in this. So then I started using the YSL Lash Clash. On my brows, I use the Rare Beauty Brow Harmony in Cool Brown, the gel and the pencil. And then for my powder, bronzer, blush and highlight, I actually used the Benefit Earth Angel Foroscope palette. And I used Hoola, I used this blush, which is called Honeymoon, and then the Cookie Highlighter. This is what the foundation looks like, fully powdered and fully finished in natural lighting. I will show you in a sec what it looks like under my softbox lights, but at the moment, I almost feel like I can see a tiny bit of glitter on my forehead. Let me just, okay, yeah, when I shine my torch on it, now that it's powdered, I can definitely see in my forehead. Okay, wait, I really hope it's gonna pick up. I don't know if that's picking up on camera. I can actually see a little bit of glitter. Let me just go take a flash picture in a dark room and I'll be right back. Hmm, okay, from what I can tell, because I'm still blinded by my camera flash, it doesn't seem to have flashback. It looks pretty nice on camera. So just some close-ups in the natural light. This is how we're looking. And let's switch to artificial light in three, two, one. Did I nail my transition? So this is what the foundation looks like in solely artificial lighting. I've got two lights on either side of me here. It looks pretty nice in my opinion. If you do have any sort of like texture on your skin, the foundation doesn't like emphasize it as such, but you can definitely tell that I am wearing foundation. And obviously because I did powder and everything that is gonna happen, like adding more products onto my face, but it's not as skin-like as I was expecting it to be. But I would say in the artificial lighting, it still looks really nice. So now I'm gonna go about my day and I'm gonna check back in with you guys in a few hours when I notice any difference, I guess. But we'll see how it holds up and we'll do a full inspection. So I will see you guys in a little bit or in a few hours. <laughs> it is currently pretty much dead on three hours later. And I'm just about to head to my best mate's house. So I thought I'd do a little chicken, ch chicken, <laughs> a little chicken. I thought I'd do a little check-in just before I go. I'm now having to use artificial lighting and having a little look at my face. I definitely am starting to get a little bit oily. Hang on, let me just turn down my camera's eyes. So, and zoom you all the way in. So as you can see, a little bit on my forehead, a little bit sort of like around here, a bit on my nose. I'm starting to get a little bit oily. And usually if I was gonna be going to somebody's house and my makeup had started to look like this, I would just want to add a little bit of powder to my T-zone. I'm not gonna do that because I wanna see how well it holds up. I mean, so far it's not started to separate and it's not sort of sunk into my small lines too badly, to be honest. This side is pretty fine. This side just a little bit. And around my nose, it's still looking pretty good. But yeah, we're definitely starting to get a bit of oil three hours in. So will I come back looking like an oil slick? I guess we'll find out. This foundation has now been on for nine hours. And I have to say, by this point, I'm looking 
very oily which i'm sure you can probably tell looking at my face i'm oily now pretty much everywhere let me just zoom you all the way in so if i adjust my lights accordingly let me just turn them away from me slightly just so there's less reflection but you can still see how my face is looking you can see like i'm oily pretty much in every area of my face which i was expecting because it is advertised as a more glowy dewy looking foundation and maybe i'm not quite the target audience with having oily skin but then at the same time i find it really difficult because i have dry patches but majority oily skin i tend to go for foundations that are a little bit more glowy however usually i would say during the day i would powder ab around like halfway between i wouldn't just let my foundation sit for nine hours without touching it up if i had somewhere to be you know i would either blot my face or i would powder my face or do a combination of the two and i would always use setting spray so i would say if you do have very oily skin you are not going to get on with this foundation yes it might look beautiful for a good few hours and unless you do use a mattifying primer, then a setting mist, and then touch up throughout the day, then you might be fine. And let me know if you do have oily skin and you've tried this and you love it, let me know, or just let me know how you got on with it in general. I think if you have dry skin, you will like this foundation. If you did have dry skin all over, you probably wouldn't set it with powder all over my face like I did. I asked for James's opinion earlier, just after I'd applied it, and when we were out on a walk, so it was in the natural lighting, and I said to him, how does my foundation look? And he was like, yeah, it looks good. He was like, it looks fine. And I was like, okay, it looks fine. Which is sort of what I thought as well. Like, I think it looks nice. I wasn't like, whoa, I love it. Whereas with some of my other more expensive foundations, like for example, the NARS Light Reflecting Foundation and the NARS Radiant Longwear Foundation, those two, I both put those on and were like, whoa, I love it. I wasn't quite as blown away as I thought I was gonna be. Like, yes, it is a nice foundation, but I do have others that I definitely prefer. And for... 62 pounds it just unfortunately doesn't quite do it for me and i'm sure there are people that love this foundation let me know if you're one of them let me know if you've tried it i'd love to know your opinions from this angle lovely juicy from this angle too much too much <laughs> something that i will say it's not sunk into my smile lines all that much so like here for example not a lot of it is really gathered here for some reason more on this side like a little bit more has gathered something that is good is even though i'm extremely oily it's not really broken down around the size of my nose so that gives me hope that with some powder and with some setting spray i could probably get a lot longer wear out of this because i think it would touch up quite nicely and yeah same on my forehead like it's not it's not separated and also as well there are some foundations that i find throughout the day by the end of the day they have like gathered around my dry patches and emphasized them more almost like the moisture of the foundation has gone away and it just leaves behind like the crusty looking dry bits but it's not actually done that on these areas of dryness that I had around here where I had a few blemishes. I'd literally just take my hands and just blot the excess oil. Yes, you could use a blotting sheet, but who needs a blotting sheet when you have hands so since doing that i have lost a little bit of the coverage and it has started to look a little bit more patchy around the areas that were a little bit more oily i'm just gonna go in with a bit of the maybelline fit me powder the shade 105 natural ivory now that i've done that actually this spot is really starting to poke through but i have to say you know it is workable and it is savable however i would not recommend leaving it nine hours in between blotting and repowdering your face hopefully this helps based on wearing this for the past two days and my judgments would i repurchase this no not for the price even with free shipping like even if it was 45 pounds that's still a lot for a foundation and i don't love it more than my other high-end foundations would i wear it again yes honestly my move right now is i feel like this plant <laughs> That plant is so dead. Oh, at least this one's still thriving. I hope this was helpful. If it was, please give this a thumbs up. If you'd like me to test out any other new recent viral makeup products, let me know because I'll tell you my honest thoughts. Also, if you like this kind of video, feel free to subscribe. I do lots of makeup reviews and honest makeup reviews on my channel. I hope you guys are doing good and I will see you in my next video. Bye.